Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana and this is part two of my four part video training series on Amazon FBA for beginners. If you have yet to watch part one, you can get access to it by going to tatianajames.com FBA or clicking the link in the description box below. So today's video is all about product research. We're gonna dive deep into how to find viable products to sell on Amazon. The majority of this video is gonna be screen share, so I'm gonna get behind my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. Now, having said that, you know, a little disclaimer here, this is just me showing you what I do. By no means am I saying this is the best way to do things or that you should do things this way. I'm just sharing with you what works for me and I hope that it helps you. All right, welcome everyone. So we're gonna start our product research on Amazon, of course, because we need to see, you know, what are people buying on Amazon? That's the whole point of uh, doing private labeling is we're not inventing something new. We're going and we're looking at the data. We're seeing what products already sell well on Amazon and we are going to, to create similar products, but we're gonna improve those products with time. And uh, so we're not gonna invent something new. So we're trying to minimize our risks. And so the first thing you have to decide is which marketplace you wish to sell on. Are you gonna sell on amazon.com in the USA? Are you gonna sell uh, in the UK, in Germany? Uh, it's up to you, you can decide, it's a personal decision. Um, most people will sell on Amazon in the US because it is the largest marketplace out of all of them. Uh, the runners up are UK and Germany, so if you live in those countries, then you may wish to sell on those platforms first, just because it's easier if you already live there to get signed up. Otherwise, you may wish to sell in the US. So you choose where you want to sell, and that's where you're going to be doing your product research. So in this case, we're going to be doing the research on Amazon.com because we're going to be selling in the US. And um, then what you would do is you would now have to kind of find some products so you can pick a random product and you can start to do your product research manually. And so manually is the way that people used to do it, the way that I did it when I was first starting. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And then I'm gonna to present to you an alternative option where you can leverage a tool to help you do product research to make things a lot easier to find more niche products and to just make the product research a faster process because it can be quite time consuming. So I'm just gonna give you an example. Um, the other day I was buying a suitcase cover. So you may start by just looking around the house at some items that you have or something that's piquing your curiosity and type it into the Amazon and that's how you kind of start this searching. Um, and I might choose a product here, let's just say this item here. And my goal with this is I'm gonna look for the BSR. The BSR stands for Best Sellers Rank. And I'm gonna find that right here. Best Sellers Rank, so it's gonna be under Product Information. And you're looking for the main categories, Best Seller Rank, not the subcategories. So you can see here suitcases would be a subcategory. This is a main category. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, a, there's a free Amazon sales estimator brought to you by Jungle Scout. I'll link that for you guys so you can check it out. And all you would do is you would input the BSR, identify the marketplace you're selling, and then also identify the category. So in this case, it would be clothing, shoes, and jewelry. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help you get an idea of how many monthly sales that uh, product does. And you're gonna be able to see whether it's a high number or a low number, in this case, not very much. So it seems like this product does not sell all that well um, and may not be something that would be very attractive to me. I'm looking for a product that sells quite well. So this would kind of be the manual process. And so you would go one product at a time and you would look at the BSR range and you would try and identify which products are selling well. And, and then it would be quite a time consuming process. So people don't really do that these days. People use tools and you may have heard of Jungle Scout or Helium 10. These are two of the most popular tools and uh, I recommend both of them. Uh, both of them are great, they're wonderful. Um, it's really a personal preference which one you wanna use. Uh, Jungle Scout, I find to be a bit more user-friendly. And uh, Helium 10, you know, the way that people compare it sometimes is that Helium 10 is like people who like to use Androids and people who like to use Apple products, uh, iPhones would be Jungle Scout. So Jungle Scout is kind of more like the iPhone user. Helium 10 is more like the Android user. And so in this example, I'm gonna share with you Jungle Scout because I 
like to use that one. And so this is what your Jungle Scout dashboard would look like. And uh, the way we start our product research is through the product database. So they really make things a lot easier for us because what we can do is instead of looking through each product category one by one, we can filter things so that we don't have to go through hundreds of thousands of pages on Amazon. And so it saves us a lot of time. So we're going to first select which categories we want to sell in. Now, I would encourage you to start thinking about what are your passions, what are your hobbies, what interests you, um, because chances are that you know you could find a product within that niche. So if you love fitness, then great, look for products in the fitness category. Um, if you're passionate about something, you're just going to be more excited to work on it, right? So if you have a passion for working out, then if you're selling, um, you know, a resistance band on Amazon you're probably going to be more excited to create marketing materials for it. And it's just going to be more fun for you to work on the business. So you don't have to be passionate about the product you do move forward with. It's not a necessity. But if you have that option between choosing a product you're not so passionate about versus choosing something you sincerely have an interest in, then by all means, go for the product that you have an interest in. So if you already know some categories out of all of these that would excite you, then just, I would say, go for those categories. You're going to find a product, a viable product within that category, because each one of these categories has hundreds of thousands of products to choose from. You're bound to find, some, to find something. So I'm going to select the categories that you don't, you probably don't want to sell in. So these are the categories I would avoid. Watches, because... You know, most people who are buying watches, they want to buy specific name brands. Uh, so I would avoid that. Video games, because of course, you're not making a video game here. That's not what we're doing with private labeling. Um, let's see here. Software. Music. Movies and TV. Kindle store. Computers and accessories, I would probably remove. Uh, I mean, no, you could keep that in there. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you're not going to be selling a computer, but maybe an accessory for a computer. Camera and photo, CDs and vinyl, books, and appliances. So pretty much all of these categories uh, are viable product categories. You can find... Uh, great products within each of these categories. So we could do a search for all of these categories, but there are going to be so many results to choose from. So I would encourage you out of these categories, which of these would interest you most and start there. And so for myself personally, today, I'm going to look at, I'm going to do arts, crafts, and sewing. I'm going to go there. Okay. So next, so again, remember you have to choose your, um, your country. So we're going to do the U S sorry. I didn't mention that earlier. Now the product here, is it going to be standard or oversized? Now I want to mention that when you're first starting to sell on Amazon, you're going to have way more restrictions than someone who has experience selling on Amazon. And that's simply because, you know, with your first product, you've got the training wheels on. You're really learning how to do this process and you want to make things as easy as possible for yourself. So you're going to try and avoid certain things uh, and be more cautious than someone who has more experience, who, you know, they don't have the training wheels on. They can take more risks. Um, they know what they're doing. And so we're going to go with, you know, the product criteria is going to be more strict for you when you're first getting started. But as you gain experience, uh, it's not going to be as strict. And you're going to be able to look in product categories that other people who are beginning may not be able to look into. You're going to be able to pick products that maybe beginners wouldn't uh, want to pick. And so the criteria changes as you progress uh, in your business. So we're going to go with standard sizing, and the reason why is because if you have an oversized product, that means that you're going to spend more money at the Amazon warehouse for storage fees. So we're going to go ahead with standard. Now the Amazon type, the seller type, excuse me, is either going to be FBA or Amazon. FBM stands for fulfilled by merchant, and that's if someone is like packaging and fulfilling the products themselves. But what we teach with the private label method, what I do, is fulfilled by Amazon. So that means that 
you private label the product and you ship it to the Amazon warehouse and then Amazon picks, packs and ships the product for you. They manage returns, they manage customer support, they do all of that for you. So you actually never necessarily have to see the products. Like you don't have them stored at your house. They're, Amazon's taking care of them. So the seller type can be Amazon or FBA. If it's Amazon, it simply means that Amazon themselves are selling that product. Um, so we can select these two. Now you have a bunch of different filter options and you can choose what you wanna do here, but I'm gonna give you some, something to work with, some ideas. The minimum and maximum price. So as I alluded to in the first video of this training series, um, you don't wanna be selling a product that's under $15. If the sales price is below $15, it can be very tough to make a profit because you've got to account for the Amazon fees, the referral fees, um, you know, shipping, your landed costs, all of that. And a product selling under $15, you know, you can make a profit. It's just not going to be very significant. And so we prefer if you find products that are selling between $15 to $70. So I'm going to put that in here. And the reason why there's a max price of about $70 is simply because when you start to sell a product that's higher than $70, people start, it becomes more, it becomes a bigger decision for someone. Right? They go to Amazon oftentimes to find cheaper products to find the best deal. And if a product's priced at over $70, then it's just uh, it, fewer people are going to add that item to cart. And so it's kind of a sweet spot, but you can play around with that uh, with time. Okay, so reviews. How many reviews should you put into these filters? Well, our goal with selling on Amazon is we want to look for products that are high demand and low competition. And so that simply means that we want to see that people have an interest in this product, that people are buying this product on Amazon, that if I were to sell this product, that there would be enough demand from shoppers that they would actually be searching for this product and buying it. But we also don't want to see um, too much competition because that makes it hard for us to compete. Um, so the way we identify competition is based on how many reviews other sellers have on their listing. And so for example, if we look here, um, this particular product has 13,160 reviews. You can imagine how long it would take you to acquire that number of reviews, a very long time. And so if you were to launch the same product, a very similar product on Amazon, and you had no reviews because you're just starting, you know, it would be very hard for you to compete with someone with 13,160 reviews. And so um, what I would recommend doing here is inputting a maximum number of reviews. You can put 50 reviews here, um, and that just means that you're really looking for products that have low um low competition, but it will limit your search results. Um, you're going to have fewer results. If you, if you want to start this way, that's great. But if you find that you don't have many results, you can increase that to 500 or even 100, 200, um, because that just means that there's going to be more competition, but you're going to have more results that show up. So I'm going to put it for 500 for right now. So minimum sales is how many monthly sales they are doing. So how many orders are they uh, moving per month? And uh, I would say that you want to look for products that are doing a minimum of 300 uh, orders per month because that, uh, if you do the math, that adds up to about 10 units per day. That's a good number to start with. Um, anything less, if they're doing like five units per day or three units today, per day, it's not very significant. So you want to look for a category that has uh, quite a bit of traction. So 300 per day is a good number. So you can obviously add more filters here, but I would say these are the uh, basic ones. Minimum and maximum weight. Um, you could put that in there, like if you don't want something that's too heavy, um, because you know the heavier the product, the more it's going to cost you to ship the item. So you could say you don't want anything that's above like 2.5 pounds. And there are some other things that you could input here. For myself, I'm going to leave this blank. The only other thing that I'm going to insert here is um, maximum rating. So the rating is how well do customers 
rate your product on Amazon. And if we look here, um, this product here is rated 4.7 out of 5. So it's rated very well. Actually, all of these products are rated very well. This one's 5 out of 5. So they've done a really great job. Um, and what we want to do is we don't want to go into a category where everyone's like, doing so well. <laughs> so we don't want to go into a category where every product is listed as rated five stars because that means that we don't really have anything to approve, improve upon. All the other sellers are doing really well. Customers are very happy. We want to look for products that have high demand but that need improvement. So this here is an example of a product that is rated poorly. It's 3.1 out of 5 stars. And I don't know about you, but if I'm shopping on Amazon, I'm looking for products that are rated like at least 4 stars out of 5. You know, 4 out of 5 is reasonable, but anything below that, then I'm like questioning the quality of the product and I'm kind of expecting that I'm going to be disappointed in the product if other people are disappointed in it. Because remember that this is rated by all of the customers and so this is social proof. So the reason why we are looking for products like this is because we're not just looking for products that are rated poorly, we're looking for products that are rated poorly but have high demand. What that means is that even though this product is rated 3 out of 5 stars, people are still buying it because people want it. People need this product. And unfortunately, the sellers on Amazon are not doing a good job at providing the highest quality product, but they're still getting sales. And so what that tells us is that as Amazon sellers, we can now go in, we can go and find a manufacturer and source a premium version of this product um, and we can get five-star reviews because we're sourcing a better version. And that way people will, who are purchasing, looking to purchase this product, will naturally gravitate towards us rather than this, these sellers here who have 3.1 out of five stars. So that's what we're doing here when we input uh, 3.7. So the reason we put 3.7 because on Amazon it looks like three and a half stars. Um, so that's what I would input. I wouldn't put a minimum rating because even if a product has one star but it has a lot of demand, that's great. Fine, no problem. Uh, you don't have to put this, but it's just going to help you find uh, better product opportunities because you're not just looking at products that have demand, but you're looking at products where there's room for improvement. So other than that, the rest of the stuff isn't as important. Um, you don't necessarily have to include keywords or exclude. Um, excluding top brands simply means that if there are big brand names, um, then you wouldn't want them to show up in the results. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because people like, know, and trust the big brand names. Big brand names spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on their marketing. Um, and so if you're competing up against with one of those big brand names, you're, you're just not going to win. So for example, Huggies is a really big brand name for babies. And if you're selling a product very much like theirs, it's hard to compete with them. So you may want to exclude, to exclude top brand names, but I wouldn't uh, for right now. We're just trying to keep things a bit more broad. So you can go ahead and search that and using the Jungle Scout database. And so now we are seeing... Um, we're seeing 80 results. So from all of this selection here, because I've used the filters, we are now seeing 80 results. So that's good. So that means I don't have to sift through hundreds of Amazon pages to look for products that meet this criteria. I can just have Jungle Scout do the work for us. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these. And if there's anything that's piquing my attention, I'm going to put it in the spreadsheet so that I can later do further analysis on that product. This looks like some type of paint. I mean, they're doing pretty good with $39,000 a month. So yeah, I am quite interested in this. And if you don't want to create a spreadsheet, like a separate spreadsheet, you can actually use Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout has this feature for you. Uh, let me see where we can do that. Where you can just say here, add product to your product tracker. So let's create a new group. We'll call it, um, we're going to call it the arts group. So um, this would be like instead of using a spreadsheet, which actually I would recommend. It's just easier to keep it all in one place. Okay, so here we have some sort of portable sewing machine. That looks kind of interesting. 
Um, I wonder how heavy it is though, but it is selling at a good price, $59.99. I like to see products that are selling at a higher price because that often means that there's going to be more of a profit margin for me. Um, you can see here that they're kind of estimating the profit. So here they're saying that your profit would be around $42, which sounds pretty great. So yeah, I definitely am more interested in this product. I would like to investigate it further. So I'm just going to add it to my product tracker in the arts category. Uh, we can see here another sewing machine. Okay. So this seems to be like another kind of sewing machine, except it's a different version. It's a handheld sewing machine. And uh, they're doing pretty well as, as well. You know, $14,000 a month in revenue, only 187 reviews. Uh, they're making about a $14 profit margin. Not so bad. I'm going to add that to my list as well. So a lot of different kind of sewing machines. So this is kind of piquing my curiosity about showing sh sewing machines. Uh, this is some sort of ring. Okay, interesting. Uh, I wouldn't sell a ring because a there's going to be different sizes and you're not going to sell every size possible. So you would have to kind of pick one size and it can just get complex. You want to avoid picking products with variations. A variation means that like there's different colors, different sizes, different patterns. Um, and it just means that it's going to cost you more in inventory and it's going to be more complex for you as a brand new seller. So it's better to just pick a simple product, something that's like there's only one. Uh, you're not selling multiple items. Um, so this I, I would not be interested in selling. Okay, what's this? So this is some sort of vinyl. Wow, they're doing really well. Let's add this. So I'm not really going into too much research here. I'm just like picking products that I'm interested in discovering more. And we're gonna go through those in detail a little bit more after. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through all of these results and then continue to pick my products. If I don't find enough uh, products that I'm interested in or viable products, then what I would do is I would select other categories. So for example, let's say I'm also interested in baby. Well, right now I have 80 results. So with the same exact filters, but adding another category, now how many products I have are 165 to choose from. So you could then, you know, select from more categories if you're struggling to find products, or you could, you know, change your filters a bit more. All right, so we are here in the product tracker and this is where we track um, the products that we wanna further investigate. So I'm gonna start with this one here. This is quite interesting, the handheld sewing machine. So I'm gonna open it on Amazon. As we can see here, this is the listing. So what I wanna do is I wanna find the main keyword for this product. Um, the main keyword is just what it's what customers are searching for on the Amazon search engine. So, you know, you as a, you are a customer, what would you search for if you were looking for this product? Chances are you're not going to be searching for uh, cordless, portable, electric sewing machine. You're just going to be searching for handheld sewing machine. So that would be the main keyword. So I'm going to paste this here. Oops, without the brand name. That's their brand name. And I'm going to select all departments uh, instead of just selecting one department. And this is gonna help me further investigate the product as a category rather than the individual product. So for this, I'm gonna click on the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. And it's gonna pull up a lot of data. It's gonna do a lot of math for me. So if you're anything like myself, who's I'm a bit mathematically challenged, this is super helpful. Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to start looking at the numbers to get a better idea of what this category uh, offers. So monthly sales, we want to see that the number is above 300. These are the average monthly sales. Remember that we want to see that on average, people are selling more than 10 units uh, per day. And so it's good. We're seeing a good amount here. Um, the opportunity score, it's, it's good information to have, but I wouldn't depend on it. Um, I find that sometimes it can be misleading. Um, what we really want to look at here are like the top 10 listings and we want to see uh, the information about it. Now we want to be careful because even though we typed in handheld sewing machine, you can see here that some of the, the search results are not handheld sewing machine. These are full size sewing machines. So we want to remove these from the search results because they are skewing the results. 
So we are only looking for products um, that are similar to the product that we chose in the product tracker. So in this case, I would remove this because it's not fitting the results. This also, this is like a different kind of sewing machine, but it's not what I'm looking for. Same with this. So as you can see, as I remove this, it changes the numbers here. This looks about right. Yep, those look accurate. Yep, yep. All of this looks about the same. Great, so we're getting a better idea now once we remove the products that are not meeting the description. So you can see average sales are declining. So I'm seeing less and less demand for this product. All right, so the rest of these, so, oh, this one too. Okay, so the rest of these are handheld uh, sewing machines. So the data is gonna be more accurate. So what we are looking for here is first and foremost, we want to see that within the top 10 uh, sellers, we wanna see that, you know, the top 10, there are a few listings that have under 500 reviews. If they all have like 500 plus reviews, that means there's a lot of competition. It's gonna be very hard for us to compete with them. So we're looking for sellers who have fewer than 500 reviews but are still doing well. So in this case, we can see here that this one's got 236 and they're doing roughly $54,000 per month in revenue, 106 doing 14,000, 46 doing 14,000. So we are seeing that there are some here that have quite a large number of reviews, but we're also seeing some that have way fewer. And so um, this is looking more promising, right? 97 reviews and they're doing $18,000 a month. So in fact, they're doing better than this listing here who has 1,500 reviews doing around $14,000 a month. So we're looking to make sure that there's no monopoly. Sometimes we can see that there is one listing that gets almost all of the sales. So this listing is um, the, the main competitor and most people who buy this product buy from this seller. And so if you see that, that's something to be aware of because then they may be, uh, you know, they're taking up all the market share. They are, um, it's going to be very hard for you to compete with that. So we're looking, we're not, we don't want to see a monopoly here. And in this case, it's looking like the sales are evenly distributed among sellers, um, even those with few reviews. So that's good. Mm, another thing we are looking for is the rating. So again, we kind of want to look for a category where not every seller is rated five stars or 4.7 stars or 4.5. We want to see a category where there's room for improvement. And so we are seeing that here. There are some that are rated high, some that are rated low. So um, there's definitely room for improvement. We're also looking to see if there's any big brand names. Again, we want to avoid any really large brand names that uh, may be making it much harder for us to compete. In this case, uh, I'm not sure this may be a big brand name. I'm not familiar with handheld sewing machines, but I could, the way I could find out is I could copy the brand name and I could paste it into Google to learn more, or I could click here on the brand, see what they're selling. And uh, in this case, I'm gonna actually paste it into Google. Uh, it doesn't seem like they are a big brand name. <laughs> if they were, they would have definitely showed up in the top results here. So in this case, it just it's it's not a big brand name that I need to be worrying about. So in terms of profit margin, you are looking to uh, have a gross thirty percent profit margin and above. And um, you could get by with a 25% profit margin, but it's really going to help you to have at least 30% because you have to account for marketing expenses, promotions. There are going to be costs um, that are, especially when you're first building your brand and starting to sell your product for the first time, there are more expenses. So you want to try and aim for a 30% plus profit margin. Jungle Scout has this profit uh, calculator here. So based on the category, the size of the product, 
It tells you what the FBA fulfillment fee is. For this product, they're paying $7.78 per product sold. So yeah, the FBA fee, it's quite high. It's usually up to 15%. Uh, which, you know, that's just the cost of doing business on Amazon and it's definitely worth it for what they do for us. Um, sorry, that's the fulfillment fee and the referral fee is $3.90. Now, in order to get a more accurate uh, profit margin, here we're showing a $14 profit margin, um, but we need to know what the product cost is. And you're not really gonna know what the exact cost of the product is until you actually reach out to suppliers. So if you are now narrowing down your list, so by now you should have like at least 20 products, you know, 15 to 20 products on your product list. And then you got to narrow that product list down. And eventually you narrow that product list down to your top three products that you would choose to sell on Amazon. And how you determine which product to go with is you have to contact suppliers to find out what the true profit margin is. And so the way that you do that is you can use a website such as alibaba.com and you can type in the main keyword in that website and we are going to be looking for products that are very similar, that look very similar to the product that we wish to sell. So aesthetically, we're looking for a product that looks like that handheld sewing machine. So this could maybe pass, maybe this one. We're trying to get as close as possible to this which, let me click on it. So that's what it looks like. Um, they actually don't even have their logo on it or anything. So let's see here. I mean, this looks pretty much, pretty much identical. So I'm gonna click on this product. Now you're gonna see here, this is Alibaba. So they have a price range between 2.39 to 2.59. So that's gonna give you an estimate of how much per unit the product costs. Now, it's gonna depend on how many units you order. The larger your order with the manufacturer, the cheaper it is per unit. So if you order a small quantity, um, they're gonna tell you what their MOQ is. MOQ stands for minimum order quantity. And if you order the smallest quantity, which say their minimum order, is 300 units and that's how many units you order, then the price per unit is gonna be more than if you were to order a thousand units. If you ordered a thousand units, it would be a little bit less expensive per unit. And so they do this because they encourage you to place larger orders. Um, so you can get kind of a bit of an estimate here. For now, you can plug this information into the Jungle Scout uh, 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 profit margin calculator, but you can just simply contact the supplier and ask them what their minimum order is, um, ask them how much it will cost, and ask them like, hey, can I put my brand name on this product? Can I customize this product? So we're gonna get into that in a second. So you can put in the product cost here, um, even if you're just estimating for now, just to kind of help you narrow down that product list. And uh, then you can calculate. And you can see here that the return on investment is 499%, which is good. You wanna aim for at least a 100% ROI, which means that for every dollar you put in, you're getting $2 back. And your profit margin, we can calculate it with the cal uh, calculator here. We can do um, profit of 1192 divided by the product cost, uh, product price. So about a 45% profit margin here. And uh, there are gonna be other expenses, right? So this is kind of an estimated gross profit margin. So, you know, you can calculate that there's probably gonna be another five, 10% that comes out of that for um, landed costs, for marketing, any additional expenses. So this may work. This may be a product that is has enough profit, has enough demand. You would still need to do a bit more investigation, of course. This was just very, very basic. I'm just giving you a simple example here as the first product I picked. So by no means am I saying go and source this product. You definitely need to investigate it further. But this gives you an idea of what, what we're trying to do here. So to help me make my decision, a few other things I'm going to consider aside from the profit margin and making sure that the numbers add up 
is number one is how can I improve this product? So again, this comes back to kind of looking at the reviews. So what I would do here is I would click on the reviews. I would go and look at all the, you know, four star and below reviews. I would open up a spreadsheet and take notes to see what are the most common complaints that people have about this product. So if I look here at the one star reviews, let's read a few of them together. Um, unit literally died the very second I used it. Okay, so that's not good. <laughs> um, okay, so just really low quality. <laughs> okay, so people are very unhappy with this product. It's rated 2.7 out of 5 stars, so it's rated really poorly. Um, so we could definitely make some improvements. Now, the way that we do this, so once I have read the feedback from existing customers, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some notes, and I'm going to contact suppliers on Alibaba, and I'm going to let them know, hey, like this is the feedback from customers. I want to make these improvements to the product. Can you do that? And you don't want to make too many improvements. You want to you want to identify what are the most uh, important things that I could do to really improve the quality of this product. For this product, like obviously quality is an issue. So naturally, you're going to be looking for a supplier that is higher quality. So it may cost you more per unit to find that supplier. You contact the supplier and you ask them, can you make these modifications? And if so, how much is it going to cost me to do that? Because remember that they're not just going to do it for free, they're going to charge you for it. So usually it's not going to cost much. It's going to be maybe a few pennies, maybe a couple dollars. It really depends on what the modifications are. But your goal is to do maybe one or two things that can make a significant impact and create for it an overall better customer experience. So that when people buy this product, they are willing and happy to leave you a five-star review because you delivered. <laughs> you promised a product and you delivered on that promise. And so that's what our goal is. So if you find that a product, um, there's not much that you can do to improve it or you lack ideas, uh, maybe the suppliers are unable to improve it or it would cost you too much to make those modifications, then you know that's something that I would consider. Maybe that's not a good fit for you. Maybe there's another product that you could pick that may be a better option. Now, the second thing you need to consider is how am I going to market this product? Marketing is, is extremely important. You could have a fantastic product to sell, high quality, um, something that's really going to help people. But if you don't know how to market your product, if you don't know how to get it in front of people, then they're never going to have the opportunity to purchase the product from you. And so your marketing is very important. And so, yes, there are certain things on, on Amazon, like turning on Amazon ads, which everyone does. Um, that's one way to market your product. But what are you going to do aside from that? How are you going to market this product? So there may be some products on your list that are more marketable than others. For example, uh, like a toilet brush <laughs> is going to be less, a less appealing product to market than, say, a floaty for the pool. A floaty for the pool, I can think of a million ideas of what I'm going to do for marketing. I could have, you know, kids outside on the pool playing with it. I could have my dog on it. Um, I could take it out to like a very fancy pool and do like a photo session there. I could take uh, some pictures by a boat to make it look, you know, special, luxurious. I'm just coming up with some things off the top of my head, but I definitely could do a lot more in terms of the marketing, the photography, the videography, um, selling it on, for example, Facebook, um, Facebook advertisements. I could create a video. You know, it's something that people might be scrolling and they'll stop to look at that video because it would be interesting. A toilet brush, I'm going to be very limited with how I can market it. It's not something that people want to look at and... It's, it's like, you know, you either need one or you don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter how great your toilet brush is. You're not going to sell me on buying your toilet brush unless I actually need one. Um, other, as opposed to like a floaty, you know, I may not need a floaty, but if I see one that's really cool and your marketing really convinces me that I need it, then I may, I may purchase it. So you do have to consider that. That's definitely something to take into account. 
um, because there are going to be some products that are just sexier than others and you can do more with them with your marketing. If you have existing assets um, that can help you market your product, for example, I alluded to fitness um, previously. If you are a personal trainer, you're in the gym all the time, you're working out with people and you decide to sell a resistance band, well, guess what? You can do a lot more in terms of the marketing than someone else like myself because you are working one-on-one with your personal training clients. You could gift them a resistance band and then you can take videos of them using your product. And you can use those videos on your Instagram, social media. You could even turn them into ads, which you could use on Facebook. You could even insert videos now into your Amazon product listings. Versus myself, because I'm not a personal trainer, um, you know, I could still take videos and use myself um, using the product, but you're going to have way more possibilities than me. So to reiterate the five most important elements of, um, you know, helping you find a product, number one is uh, looking for a product that has high demand, uh, low competition. So we are looking for products that people want to buy on Amazon, but we don't want to look for products that have too much competition, meaning too many reviews, which just makes it so much hard for us to compete with them. We're looking for products that have, you know, about a 30% profit margin or higher. You can get away with 25%, but I would definitely aim for 30. We are looking for products between 15 to $70 in price range. We are looking for products that um, can be improved, products that uh, we have, there's room for improvement so that when we sell the same item on Amazon, we can differentiate ourselves and we can give the customer the best experience possible, uh, which means for us better reviews and uh, really being able to build a good brand. And finally, we want to be looking for private label potential. Is this a product that I can private label or is it not? And other products, it's very simple to find a manufacturer who already produces this product. You simply slap your brand name on it and you're good to go. Um, other products, you may have a much harder time finding manufacturers. Some products, they are patented, which you do have to be aware of. So you have to kind of make sure, do some patent research. So that wraps up video number two of my four part Amazon FBA video training series for beginners. If you have yet to watch video number one and would like to gain access to that, as well as video three and four, you can get free access by going to tatianajames.com FBA or clicking the link in the description box below. I hope this video has been really helpful for you guys. If you have questions about product research, Jungle Scout, um, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.